there is great news from the Renault Nissan Alliance, a facelifted 2024 Nissan Qashqai, right next to me, everyone. If Renault could have a lot of new goodies, so could Nissan. But wait, is, it, is, is this all? Really? For this facelift, there's no drastic change apart from the exterior mainly. The changes lie here at the front and at the rear. So let's start with the front. Nissan has altogether abandoned the tradition design of having the chrome here. Uh, or having those uh, continuous uh, LED lights instead they have something different going on which looks very interesting those uh, checkered grills right here they kind of remind me of something Reno has been obsessing over lately a rather more interesting rear light they no longer look budget compared to the pre-facelift version and for the interior there's no big change apart from the stitching on the leather seats now 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 facelifts don't always have to mean something glamorous or massive drastic changes sometimes facelifts can always be humble but just a little tweak and it changes the whole equation and this is the case for this nissan Qashqai, i believe because when i saw the pre-facelift version it looks budget but this looks like it's going places but we do have to cover the price tag of this nissan Qashqai. it costs forty-seven thousand euros now you get a 360 degree parking camera with parking sensors at the front and at the rear and you get an actual air vent right there nothing fake nothing pretentious although this part of the grill is fake this whole area right here but uh, this part has a purpose now also part of the facelift you get interesting wheels and a rather interesting side design at first it would make you think of the nissan aria now both front doors get keyless entry perfect but there is just something i've noticed about nissan cars in general i don't know what is it with them they have very light doors like and i don't really know if this is something to be proud of or if this is something to be a point of concern because most cars of today have really heavy doors or you know something with a bit of heaviness to it but this nissan door is like a feather although there is great news you can open the rear door 90 degrees almost now believe it or not this nissan Qashqai is a hybrid petrol now this hybrid technology is a self recharging which recharges from the thermal heat of the brakes now it's time to check out the interior of the Nissan Qashqai. Overall, thank goodness, first of all, that they don't have this huge tablet to control everything because that's the trend everyone is obsessing over. Uh, but Renault Nissan have been rather humble about it. Well, at least I know Nissan has. Uh, interesting gear lever. It's exactly like what I've seen in the Nissan Aria. And I like this trim right here. It looks like wood, but then you get this little marking on it, like as if it's a blueprint. That's cute. That's nice. Now, this whole area right here is your climate control, and it is beautifully laid out. Thank goodness for that. It's easy to use, nothing pretentious, and you even get heated seats. Now, the climate control looks very evolutionary. I recall they had the exact same climate control like this in the Nissan Navara in the late 2010s. Uh, that's, it's very interesting. They just evolved it, and it looks nicer. Oh, and you do get heated steering wheel as well. Now, the steering wheel seems okay. I'm not going to say it's the best I've ever seen, because it's... It's nice to hold on to. It's leather wrapped, but the leather is a bit on the firm side. Steering adjustment, I can move it up, down, in and out. Brilliant. Electric steering adjustment. Excellent. Wow. And you even get seating memory. I mean, so far, so good with the equipment list. Now, you get this wireless cell phone recharge right here with a 12 volt socket and a start stop button right there. Although it would be nicer if it was right here, but doesn't matter. And then I'm going to cover the infotainment system in a moment, but first I would like to cover the practicality. Now, practicality is usually where the Nissan Renault Alliance tend to lag slightly behind. So it's hit or miss. Sometimes they have the best, sometimes they're not. So, cup holders, bottle holders right there, they're fixed sizes, really. I mean, they just, they're just they just there. Uh, and then, as I mentioned earlier, there's a wireless telephone recharge there. And there is a double solution for your central console storage, which is actually the first time I've ever seen this. Even Skoda rarely offers this. You get two charging ports in there. That's good but it's average for its price and segment. Good, I'm impressed. The glove box, ooh, the glove box is also average. Not the best though. Uh, but one thing to note is that the door bin is small. This has to be the smallest door bin I've ever seen for its segment. That is alarming. But then this gave me a chance to look at this area where you have the mirror controls and the window controls beautifully presented. I like it. It, it, looks, it looks premium. That's good. Uh, now, the fact that the media controls, uh, Nissan puts it right up here, kind of reminds me of what they usually do with Infinity. 
Now there's something a bit questionable I found. Uh, there's this bit of plastic right here which looks, which had me thinking it was a storage space, but it seems like it's for your fuse box or something. You do not get a glasses holder, but you do get a panoramic roof. Not a sunroof though. And in the winter, you won't need to waste time scraping the ice off the window because you get little defrosters that will melt the ice for you. Huh, I wonder what was Nissan trying over here? I mean, they left this area right here just for the trim. All right, now I would like to talk about the infotainment system. So first I want to start with the dashboard. I'd say it's not as techy as compared to Stellantis, Volkswagen Group or other uh, German competitors, uh, if I'm being honest. It's, uh, but it's an infotainment system that gets the job done, uh, especially for the instrument cluster. And when it comes to the infotainment system, this uses an Android system. So it's, it's basically using Google Maps for your navigation, which is something good and bad. The good part about it is that it's Google Map, something reliable, something that's been around for ages, and it is awesome. You get to the details like the hills and the uh, forests and the built-up areas. I like that. But on the other hand, it's not done by Nissan entirely. Let's check out other areas. So um, it's easy to use. You, it's, it's almost like a smartphone, basically. Let's see Nissan services, Google Assistance, Play Store. I I'm telling you, this is almost like a smartphone. Now it is time to check out the rear seat of the Nissan Qashqai. Oh, right. Oh, OK. Uh, the back seat feels like I'm sitting on a bench, quite literally. It's very, very firm. Oh dear. Okay. Um, now, the doors are pleasantly light, but it seems to be the case with all Nissan models. And I've noticed this with Nissan only, whereas other car manufacturers have heavier doors. And then I get this nice armrest right here, which doesn't have a strap or anything for me to pull down. So I have to pull it down with a bit of force. And the, then you get two cup holders of fixed sizes that are quite shallow. So my bottle will, will fall. Not a big deal though, because you get backseat pockets, which are leather and it's good. It's a bit on the firm side though. The door bins are very small and you get two charging ports that are there as if they were an afterthought. You don't get uh, climate control of the rear seats, but you get a handle and a coat hook up there and lighting. And my feet room is limited. My shin is making contact with the driver's seat. All this can depend on the seating adjustment of the driver and the front seat passenger. Knee room should again depend on the seating adjustment of the driver and front seat passenger. Otherwise, for me, it's okay. It's good. Headroom seems to be like the best thing about this uh, rear seat. It, it's great, but the headrest is a bit firm, I'd say. Now it is time to check out the boot space of the Nissan Qashqai. Now, right here, I see a lot of hit or miss. So the first thing I like is the fact that you get the body pane that's not very exposed. So therefore you won't be making accidents, hitting it with your luggage in long term. You, you get the boot lip that's plastic right here, easy to slide things in. And then a rather adjustable boot floor. Look at this. This is pleasant and you even can get rid of this if ever you don't need it. This is really, it's rare you see this. Nice uh, solution right here. This is a, uh, just like a Skoda almost, or better than a Skoda, not sure. But whatever this is, flexible. Now you get tether points as well. You get a 12 volt socket as well, that's decent. Uh, but the part that I, oh, and you do get uh, storage spaces on the side right there and right there. But now I was about to say that the part I questioned rather would be the fact that you don't get any shortcuts to fold on the rear seats, no latch or anything. So to answer the big question about this facelift, is that it? I think, you know what everyone? Yes and no. Yes, I think this is it. There's no drastic change to the interior and to the exterior to some extent. But then no, there is more to what meets the eye. Uh, if you look at the wheels, it has this Aria style to it. The front has a rather Aria style to it, although I actually mistook it for a Toyota when I first saw pictures of it. The rear light is better. It looks premium. Nissan is going places. They are aiming more premium, but then to be fair, everybody in the mass market has gone down that route. Volkswagen, Skoda, you name it. Everybody is going there. Even Stellantis. Oh my goodness. Stellantis has been going crazy about it with the touch screens. You, you see, so Nissan is not alone in what they're doing, but when it comes to certain aspects like the technology, like the infotainment system, this is where I feel like Nissan and Renault in particular, they both lag behind compared to competitors like that of the Volkswagen Group, Stellantis, or even BMW and Mercedes, although there's no comparison because these are premium players. This is in the mass market. But then for a price of 47,000 euros, I do have 
expectations. Here's how I would sum up this Nissan Qashqai for you. If you want something that's family friendly and that's also city friendly at the same time and good value for money to some extent, this Nissan Qashqai is for you. If you can compromise on certain aspects that feel like they're missing or if you can compromise on not having a top of the range infotainment system compared to Volkswagen Group or Stellantis. But if you really were expecting tech, if you were expecting to live in the 2020s, this Nissan Qashqai can raise a bit of questions because right now I felt like I was still living in the 2010s with this Nissan Qashqai. There's no drastic change, if you know what I'm saying. But then to be fair, it does have certain advantages. And the biggest advantage I can think of would be the reliability 